What's up guys? I've been meaning to make another, you know, part four for the Jegs crate engine, but I just wasn't sure exactly, you know, what I was going to do and how I was going to deal with, you know, what I found. But n now I've got to figure it out. Basically what I think I'm going to do, as of now, <laughs> is I think I'm going to try and salvage parts of it for various builds and deal with the rest later. I mean, I really want to get my 77 Corvette going, so I think I think I'm just going to steal those heads, do some quick port work on them because they're not as you know how I expected. And I'll show you that here in a minute. So I think I'm going to do that with the heads. Um, the short block, I don't, I don't want to get to it. All I know is I want to, I want to build this donor engine over here and get my get the Trans Am going as well. So I mean. However that long it takes me to get the red Corvette going, the Trans Am going, then I'll probably deal with trying to salvage that Jegs short block. Maybe I'll even sell it off and let be someone else's problem. You know, I'd love to know, of course. I mean, well, hey, check out my video. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to try and keep this short and sweet. Here's what I got from the heads. Okay, thanks to our comment online. I learned that I, I measured the valves wrong. See, I was measuring them at the tip, but you can see a little bit of a step here. Oversized valves are oversized below the locks, that way you can still use the same retainer and locks. So, you can clearly see these valves from both heads are oversized. Well, not the outer tubes, those are old ones. But anyways, let me switch hands here real quick, and we'll show you. right there and there's the OEM valve sorry my hand hands right in the way I'm trying to look through my hand <laughs> so you can see once again when I measured the tip it looked like it was good but when I go lower it is not so these valves are new but they're oversized and it looks like, I mean, even right down here, they're even fatter at the stem, or at the base of the stem. So, I got my gram scale out just to show you the weight difference here real quick. Because when you're doing a performance build, valve train weight matters. So, I mean, I don't really want to sink a ton of time and money in these heads when I have, you know, big heavy valves. And I mean, I, I, I could have them, you know, guys installed into the heads. You know, new liners or whatever. But that's more money to sink into some stock castings. I mean, I would have rather have just bought brand new heads. Well, I should have got a new GM crate engine. But we'll get into that more maybe later. <laughs> Let's get back to these valves. So, here we go. Stock exhaust valve. 95, well, 96 grams. Oversized exhaust valve, 108.9 grams. And you know what? I just remembered. We'll mix this up even better. Here's uh, a 202. Oh, we've got this cleaner one. A 202 and a 1.6 valve. Both undercut stems. Don't worry. I'm not reusing that. <laughs> okay. 97 grams. It's a bigger valve. Okay, intake valves, stop, 111.8, oversized, 118.9, undercut, a little bit of floor dirt on there, 112.3, so they're, they're heavier than the, the, lar the larger performance valves. I mean, they are undercut stem, but still. That's not much undercut compared, you know. Anyways, moving on. Now, for the heads, we have the 062 and the 906. You can clearly see that the 906 has hardened exhaust valve inserts. 
And on the 6.2, it does not. I mean, there's a little bit of a casting line right here. I'll get a little better light right there. But you can clearly see that is not an insert. It's the same material. When you go over here, you have two different materials right next to each other. So when I talked to ATK, they told me, don't worry, both heads have hard inserts. Well, they clearly do not. So, you know, I mean, it's like I said, I, I originally was going to send these off to the machine shop, have them do the, you know, screw in studs so it can be all, you know, perfect and machine them down and use guy plates and so on. Now, I don't know. I mean, I'm still, I mean, it's still probably cheaper than buying a set of um, self aligning good rockers, but, eh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, let me know what you think in the comments. <laughs> I'm thinking, like I said, this is just, you know, try and, you know, make it work for what I want, salvage what I can, deal with it when I want to, and right now, I just want to get my, my, my C3 going, I want to get my Trans Am going, I mean, I probably should have just threw the engine in the Trans Am last year, not even touch it, I would have never known, it would have been running, and I will, for, well, who knows how long, I'm, I'm still... I'm still I'm kind of scared of all the horror stories I read about the low end. People talking about missing rings and you know other you know way too loose bearing clearance and stuff. And I, I, that's why I'm kind of wait, holding off on tearing down the, the short block. I want to buy some more tools when I do it. I think and measure and check a few more things out better because I just don't want to. You know, I don't want to just you know send it. I mean, if I send it, I mean I'm I'm, I'm gonna send this thing, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know. Anyways. Um, oh, um, before I forget to, that um, crate, the one, the one bonus <laughs> is it was supposed to be a two bolt, and it's a four bolt, so. <laughs> I, that's still, that's, you know, the scale of good to bad, that's, yeah, we're still, I think, a little more heavier on the bad side, but. Anyways, at this point, my recommendation is spend a little bit more and get a brand new GM. I mean, unless you need, you know, just just as cheap as cheap as you can get and throw it in there, and you don't want a junkyard or used. I guess get it in a Jags engine, but otherwise I will go with a brand new. I, I strongly recommend going with a brand new GM crate. So, I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Keep it real. Awesome.